Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today we'll talk a little bit about coroutines. Yes, yes, I know, we were supposed to talk about um, combat system and make another part of it. But to be fair, I realized that in almost every single tutorial I'm creating, I'm using coroutines. So I thought it actually might be beneficial for you to know what they are and how they work. So let's get straight to them. Yes. So when it comes to coroutines, I think the Unity's documentation is actually pretty clear about them. So let's have a look at what it says about them. A coroutine allows you to spread tasks across several frames. In Unity, a coroutine is a method that can pause execution and return control to Unity, but then continue where it left off. Blah, 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 blah. Now, let's break it down into important bits. First of all, a coroutine is a method. That means you don't have to learn any crazy syntax, there's nothing unusual going on there. You basically define a regular method that has to return an enumerator. It doesn't mention it here, but it's pretty clear uh, further down or in the example. So for example, here we have a simple um, fade coroutine, which returns the enumerator. The same here, right? So as, as easy as that. Now, the critical part and that what makes the coroutine special and useful is that this method can pause execution and return control to Unity, but then continue what it left off. So what it means in simple words is we do some code. As you know, the code executes one line after the other. And then we reach a special line. This line in, in case of coroutine starts with the yield keyword We'll see some examples in the second, so don't worry about that, but it starts with the yield, return, and then we return something. And this something is a condition. So basically this is a special thingy that is implemented by Unity and allows us, for example, to wait for a certain amount of time or until certain conditions are met. So after that happens, so maybe another word. So we reach the special lines and say, okay, let's wait until X, Y, Z happens. Then the full control is given to Unity and other code executes as usual as it would do if the coroutine wouldn't be there. Then every single frame, our condition is evaluated. So the Unity uh, coroutine system checks if the uh, time passed or if the condition became true. And if so, the code gets back to our coroutine and, and executes all the code after this special line. Let's have a look at some examples. Um, for this, we'll use the code from the previous tutorial about uh, combat system, but if you haven't followed it, don't worry at all, you will not need it. Um, I'm just using it to have some nice code base to have something to show you without wasting uh, too much of your time. So here we have the simple uh, handle attacking method which when the button attack button is pressed and we are not attacking, initializes the attack. Uh, what it means is basically here, uh, whenever we attack, just let's give, uh, allow it to recompile. You see, whenever we attack, there is, don't worry about this jump, this jump is actually caused by the coroutine, but you see this sword swing um, is uh, what we do. Uh, wh wh what's the attack about? Now, when the attack finishes, we start a coroutine Mm, and this is very specific uh, to coroutines. This is very usual. You will see it everywhere. You will have to use it if you want to use coroutines. So basically the start coroutine is method that starts the coroutine. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, sorry. Now, this method mm, is very simple. As we mentioned before, it has to return the enumerator. The important bit here is uh, that you have to be very, very careful because besides the R I enumerator, there is I, I enumerator generic type. So there is something that you can provide type to. And then besides the R I enumerator, there is also I enumerable, you see, and also generic and also I J enumerable. So you have to be very, very careful to use the right one. And the right one, as I say, is the I enumerator uh, without the generic type. Now, um, why is that? It's basically the start coroutine does not actually take the method, but it actually takes the um, enumerator. But 
that's pretty advanced and you don't have to worry about that. The important thing is that your coroutine returns the enumer I enumerator. Now, in every coroutine, you will have to have the yield return something. And this something is usually, not usually, I would say, pretty, um, pretty much always, white and X, Y, Z. So it can be white, uh, uh, wait until, it can be wait for seconds, and there are some other methods which you can, uh, so there are some other instructions that you can find. Uh, but to be fair, I don't think I ever used anything besides waiting until the end of frame, I'd waiting until there was a certain condition met and wait uh, f for a time. Now we have to create a new instance of this condition and now depending on what type of condition it is we have to provide something. Uh, so in this case I'm using wait until and then providing it a delegate that, um, that returns a boolean I wouldn't like to go um, too much uh, detail about delegates here. So if you don't know what delegates are, um, you can assume that what you can give there. So this, if you don't know what this strange syntax is, what are arrow methods, don't worry at all. What you can do uh, instead is, for example, you can create simple methods. So for example, you can create a method that returns bool and La something like something silly like that right now I return that mm, is attacking whoops and in my case the important bit is that it's not attacking right so it's not attacking then I return it's not attacking and then what you can do instead of using um, arrow function arrow method mm, you can use name of this method. Now, what's important, you see, I don't put braces here. So you have to remember that if you use um, defined method, you cannot put the braces there. It will not work, um, you will see error, so um, this should give you a clue. And I think if you have smart IDE, it should actually... No, the message is not too helpful. So yes, you have to remember about that. Um, but that's when it comes to wait until. So when, when you use wait until, you have to provide a method that returns a boolean. Now, what will happen the, when the code reaches this line? So you could have uh, like line one here, uh, line two, and those things would happen straight after you start the coroutine. So you start the coroutine, first line happens, second line happens, then you reach this line, and then this is evaluated all the time and until it is not true, other code is happening. So you get back here, the handle attacking is happening, all other code that I have here happens, nothing, uh, nothing going on into this wait uh, until coroutine, until this becomes true. So when we are not attacking, we are getting back here and then going to this and then jumping. And this is literally the reason why you see the character jump after the attack, right? So jump, jump, jump. That's because we do regular attacking, then we start the coroutine and wait until, until we are not attacking. Now let's have a look at wait uh, for time, which is the second um, type of uh, condition that I'm using most often. So instead of waiting until time, let's rename it to be, oh, Jesus, yes, wait for a time. And now we change wait until to wait. And you see, you have some other options there too. Wait for seconds. Now in wait of uh, for seconds, you don't provide delegate anymore, you provide um, a float. So for example, we want to wait two seconds. So wait two seconds and then jump. Nothing special there. Let's remove this one and let's start this coroutine instead. Let's start our game. Ta Beautiful. So now I'm attacking one, two, jump. 
attack, one, two, jump. Woohoo! So it's as simple as that. Um, yes, and I think uh, you will find many, many, many uses for that. Um, it's quite easy to find use cases for this one. It's very easy to find use cases for wait until. Mm, there is yet another mm, thing which is very often used. Um, it's not so straightforward at the beginning. It's a little bit harder to find use cases for that ad hoc because um, usually when you have to use it, it means you have a complex code, you probably F something and you know you will have to you have to find it for where you have to find the workaround or, or do something crazy um, what I mean here is imagine that you have quite a lot of code happening in update and you have to ensure that something happens at the very end and again I know it sounds silly because in simple code you can just put it at the last the last action and it will happen last but <laughs> The word is not always so easy. So let's have a look at a example. Let's start by creating a method to change the color of um, sprite renders. Color zip. We have multiple sprite renders because um, basically this character is pretty modular, hat is separate, body is separate, legs are separate, and so on and so on. So uh, first we want to get all sprite renders. Sprite renders. Now, how we do that? Easy peasy get component. In now, we have two versions. You have get component, which will uh, in children, which will get the first component, and you have get components in children, which will return um, all components in children of that of the provided type. So here, uh, we'll get all sprite renderers uh, from the children. Now, uh, we want to iterate through the sprite renderers and for that we'll use this loop for each and use the power of my IDE to generate the code because I can. Yes, so here we have uh, for each loop a sprite renderer, sprite renderer, color and let's change it to the provided color. Now, let's say somewhere here we want to change the color to C ah uh, no C to something crazy like red. Beautiful. Let's save it. Let's run the game. Yes, and as you see, the character is red as expected because every single frame we call the change color to red. Now let's imagine this code is a crazy complex. This is part of a incredible magical code base that you had to work with, and you don't know what is going on or you are uh, working on a game jam and you have one hour left, you just don't want the character to be red, you want it to be black, right? So you cannot modify this code, you cannot get rid of this line because of something, uh, but you want to ensure that there is something that happens after. So what you can do is you can wait for the, for the end of the frame. So. Normally, um, as a part of this frame, obviously everything go, will go like that. And now you want to um, wait until the end of frame. And you do that very easily by doing yield return null. Now we call this and we cut it off because we don't want we don't want it to be part of the handle attacking. And now let's uh, mess a part of the scoroutine. Let's change color to color black. Beautiful. We just to make sure, okay, we copied that, I think. And now just to make it even more um, tricky and uh, show a little bit more how it works, um, let's paste it before the change color. So you see the logical order would be that we start this coroutine, we change color to black, then we change color to red, something happens, something happens. So at the end of this frame, always the code should be, uh, sorry, the sprite renderers should be red. But they are black, yes. And now, uh, why is that? Basically, what is happening here? We start the coroutine, wait until the end of frame. So. Obviously, um, we give back control to Unity on this very line. 
so other things are happening, for example this, so we change color to red, then we adjust head position and rotation, then we handle attacking, but then when the frame finishes at the beginning of the next frame, wait until the end of frame is called. So what happens? This overrides the change color and as a result we get the black character. I hope this is clear. Now, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, ask questions, so if I said something wrong or you have some amazing examples of how you use coroutines, please feel free to drop the comment uh, in the, under this video and please, please don't forget to join our Discord, um, there is more and more uh, life, there are more and more people, so a lot of stuff is happening, feel invited to become part of our community. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.